The government has suspended 30 of the UK's 350 arms export licenses to Israel. It's a decision that the chief rabbi says beggars belief and will encourage our shared enemies. This is, a, this is a serious issue. We either comply with international law or we don't. And we only have strength in our arguments because we comply with international law. I appreciate the party opposite didn't think that international law mattered. And that's why we got into that difficulty thing. Well, the United States is now attempting to pressure the British government uh, to continue all weapon shipments to Israel despite the international community's fears that said weapons are being used to carry out human rights abuses and uh, violations of international law. Now, before we get to the details of how the US has responded to the UK's decision to suspend some weapons to Israel, we should talk about what weapons are gonna be suspended and how much of an impact this would have on Israel's ongoing war against Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. Now earlier this week, Britain did announce that they would immediately suspend shipments of 30 out of 350 export licenses to Israel for items used on the war on Gaza. Obviously, this is a tiny fraction of what the UK is sending to Israel to support what the IDF is currently carrying out in Gaza. But when you take a look at the amount of weapons that UK accounts for in Israel, you'll kind of get a sense that this isn't really gonna make much of a difference. Nonetheless, the US is obviously panicking about it. Israel is furious about it. We're gonna get to everyone's statements in just a moment. But this suspension includes sales of components for some military aircraft, such as fighter planes, helicopters, drones. They're also suspending some items used for ground targeting. So why is the UK doing this? Like, Where, where is this coming from? Why did they make this decision? Well, Foreign Secretary David Lammy said, the assessment found a clear risk that the exported items, quote, might be used to commit or facilitate a serious violation of international humanitarian law. What's really telling about this story, by the way, is the acceptance among players in the international community that Israel is carrying out violations of international law while the United States keeps denying it. So you're gonna get a taste of that as I keep presenting the details of the story. So in response to this, Benjamin Netanyahu declared that the decision was shameful and only emboldens Hamas. Yeah, the guy who facilitated financial payments to Hamas has something to say about what emboldens Hamas. Okay, sure. He also says, with or without British arms, Israel will win this war and secure our common future. Well, it's easy to say that when the UK accounts for a minuscule percentage of Israel's weaponry. And even though, like, if they didn't halt any or suspend any of the weapon shipments to Israel, it would still account for a minuscule percentage of Israel's weapons. But they decided to take a minuscule percentage of that minuscule percentage and halt those weapons, which again, I don't think is really gonna have much of a difference. It sends a statement, it sends a message that the UK is a little bit uneasy with how the IDF is prosecuting this war. But in terms of real tangible impact on Israel's ability to continue doing what it's doing, I think it's minimal to say the least. Now, Amnesty International agrees with me. And Greg Hands, who is the Minister of State for Trade Policy under the previous government, told Parliament that Britain's exports account for 0.02% of Israel's overall military imports. So as a result, I mean, Amnesty International just calls a spade a spade. They criticize the UK's decision as too limited. So is that gonna have any weight over Israel's decision? I'm sorry, the UK's decision to maybe increase the amount of weapons that they're willing to suspend? Probably not, but I do think it's telling that Amnesty International is like, this isn't really gonna make much of a difference. Now, even though the UK is suspending a fraction of Israel's weapon shipments to Israel, which will again have very little impact on how they're carrying out this war, the US is already getting involved and pressuring the UK to essentially reverse their decision here. And how are they doing it? Okay, get ready to laugh. 
The US had privately warned Britain against suspending arms sales amid concerns it could damage attempts to broker a ceasefire. Hey, don't scroll away. Did, did, did. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. I'm just gonna let that like ridiculous statement sink in. You wanna know who stands in the way of a ceasefire agreement? Benjamin Netanyahu. The guy who agreed to a ceasefire deal that was outlined by Biden and said, huh, I agree to it. Now let's see what Hamas does. Hamas agrees to it, even though the provisions in that ceasefire deal made clear that there would not be a permanent ceasefire. Hamas agreed to that. And then Netanyahu took it and said, "Oh, I'm going to add some more provisions to it. Israel wants full control of the Philadelphia corridor." Which makes it so clear this is not someone who's actually interested in a ceasefire. So if the US is concerned about a ceasefire deal, Maybe they should have a long, hard talk with Benjamin Netanyahu, who, that, who has been the number one obstacle to that. Number one obstacle. He doesn't want the war to end. The people of Israel know it, which is why you have mass protests going down in Israel. The American people who are paying close attention know it. Only those who have bought into the propaganda or have been funded by AIPAC genuinely think that the only thing standing in the way of a ceasefire deal is Hamas or some other BS reason. The idea that the UK halting a minuscule percentage of their weapon shipments to Israel is gonna stand in the way of a ceasefire deal is laughable to say the least. But look at the US throwing its weight around, telling the UK what to do. It is unbelievable to me, but let me continue. <laughs> a senior government source said, the government had been poised to make the announcement earlier, but faced private interventions from Israel and the United States. Quote, the Americans were always going to be difficult, even if the Israelis were far more angry, the source said. But they joined together announcing it would hurt the ceasefire deal, which no one is buying unless they're absolute suckers. Okay. So the US State Department spokesperson, uh, Matt Miller, always a total joy and pleasure to hear from, uh, conf was confronted about this, okay? And I love the way that this reporter framed the question because the question here is how could the US reach such a different decision from its closest allies as it pertains to Israel and how it is carrying out this war? Take a look. You're trying to, I think, distinguish this saying like, this is our law, this is their law. But effectively, the battlefield that you're looking at is the same battlefield and we're all trying to get at that. We are. We're just trying to wrap our heads around how two countries with pretty similar values, by the way, are looking at the same battlefield and coming with very different conclusions. We are looking at the same battlefield. We, I won't have not reached conclusions. I think number one, it is important to say we have reviews that are ongoing and we haven't made any final determinations or any final conclusions yet. Number two, there is a standard in the UK law. I will butcher it if I try to speak to that standard, but there's a standard <laughs> that relates to the risk, I think it is. Um, but there's a standard hold on, hold on. in the US. I, I, I know, and it is a different standard, and so they make their determinations based on the UK, the standard that is written in UK law. We will make our determinations based on the standard based in US law. Okay, we also have laws about our weapons not being used by foreign governments to carry out human rights abuses or violations of international law. We also have those types of laws here in the United States. Uh, the UK and the US, both governments taking a look at the exact same war. And I think that reporter's question was absolutely right. How is it, how is it that the UK could look at how this war is being carried out and say that they are fearful that their weapons are being used to carry out violations of international law, human rights abuses. While the US doesn't see the same thing, no idea of what, what's going on. It really does show you, by the way, that the Biden administration never once even considered using our weapons as leverage to get Israel to rein in the slaughter of innocent civilians in the Gaza Strip and now obviously the West Bank. I mean, the war has now spread to the West Bank, right? P people had been forced out of their homes by Israeli settlers slash terrorists. 
The IDF standing by letting it happen, the Israeli government standing by letting it happen, and now they're doing bombings in the West Bank. And some governments are like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we really want to aid and abet this. And the UK isn't the only government, even though I guess some action is better than no action. I mean, I live in America with a government that refuses to halt any weapon shipments to Israel, regardless of what Israel does, okay? So I really don't have any room to talk when I take a look at our government. But you look at the UK and I mean, they did a tiny amount here. Other governments have gone further and I wanna talk about that. So um, let's take a look at Italy, for instance, because last year Italy announced that uh, they had stopped sending weapons to Israel. The government said that it was honoring existing orders on the condition that the weapons would not be used against civilians, according to Reuters. How does Italy, like these are Western allies. How do our Western allies look at the same war and decide, yeah, we don't really wanna, we don't really wanna send weapons for Israel and the war that they're prosecuting, the way they're prosecuting it, we're, we're not into that. But the US is like, you can't do this, it's standing in the way of a ceasefire deal, total joke. You have the Netherlands, the courts in the Netherlands actually ordered the Dutch government to suspend exports for parts for F-35 fighters to Israel. And apparently the government is not in favor of what the courts decided there. So they're going to challenge this, they're gonna appeal this decision to the highest court in the Netherlands. So we'll see how that plays out. Because of evident risks of serious violations of international humanitarian law, in response to a lawsuit brought by Oxfam Novid and two other human rights groups. Okay, that was the decision that the courts in the Netherlands decided on. But then again, the Dutch government plans on appealing that. We'll see how that plays out. You have Belgium. They suspended two licenses for gunpowder exports to Israel following the ICJ's order directing Israel to do more to prevent civilian deaths, which clearly they haven't done. And Canada has also halted weapon shipments to Israel as well. But the US continues to arm Israel heavily despite violations of international laws and human rights abuses. The United States has supplied security assistance worth $6.5 billion to Israel since October 7th, according to the Washington Post back in June. It is the top supplier to the Israeli military, accounting for a whopping 69% of its total arms imports between the years of 2019 and 2023. And so sure, it, it sends a message to have one of our closest allies, the UK, suspend some weapons to Israel, but it, but at the end of the day, if we're talking about which governments are aiding and abetting Israel and how it's carrying out this war, really front and center, you have the United States. You have our weapons manufacturers getting rich off of this. And my favorite thing, my favorite statement and talking point from members of the Israeli government is, why are these, why are these Americans complaining about how they're funding our war? Don't they understand that we have to spend some of that money on their defense contractors and their weapons manufacturers? No, that's, that doesn't make us happy. <laughs> that's not something that benefits the American people. It benefits a small group of already incredibly fabulously wealthy individuals who profit off of war. That doesn't do anything for ordinary Americans whose taxes are essentially funneled to that very small group of very wealthy people through this war that's going on in Gaza, which of course, I mean, the money is one thing, okay? The money obviously infuriates me, but that comes second to the absolute brutality and slaughter of women, children, and innocent people in both the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. That's the real injustice here. And I just wanna make clear that our allies in the international community see it clearly. And the US government will bully them and ensure that they don't see it clearly. But hopefully the UK stays true to what they decided here. And maybe they widen that list of weapons that they suspend to Israel, we'll see.
But uh, the longer this war goes on, I don't think Netanyahu realizes. I get that he's continuing this war for his own political reasons. He wants to stay in power. The longer the war goes on, the longer he can stay in power, the longer he can skirt any responsibility for the corruption charges he's facing. But what he's doing is destroying Israel. Not just the Palestinians, not just Gaza, not just the West Bank. It is destroying Israel, but he doesn't care. Didn't care about the hostages, didn't even care to keep his own people safe on October 7th. Funded Hamas, facilitated the money being funneled from Qatar to Hamas, and then turns around and cries about the monster he partly helped create. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.